Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan, this is Pumpkin, and you are watching my 3CW Revival review. So Revival was on Friday, I'm filming this Monday. So it's a little less fresh in my mind than what it would have been if I could have filmed it sooner. And as you can see I don't have Richard with me, and Richard was of course at the show with me, he was in my predictions. So I don't even have anybody to bounce off of for memory, so let's just see what we can do. So I've got the results opened up again on 3CW's Facebook page, so I'll be looking over there for them. I, I have no notes on the matches, so wish me luck. So kicking us off right away, we had Mickey the Dragon taking on El Fantasmo in El Fantasmo's 3CW debut. Even before the match began, this was great. Again, not only was El Fantasmo's 3CW debut, it was my first time seeing him live. And this dude's entrance is crazy. The flips and the flips and the flips and it's like, damn. This dude doing flips like it's nothing and I'm here doing flips of burgers like I'm hungry. Okay, and then of course, like I say, we had Mickey and Mickey was fun. He was fun at... Stand and room only, two, stand and deliver, and he was just as great here, and I believe it was Alex Gracie that he faced at stand and deliver, and I feel like as good as Gracie is, this was much more of a fun match because phantasma has got the whole flying about aerial type style, so I feel like it was a lot more fun, and speaking of fun, the match started before it even started, like, well, the bell had rang, but before the match had really started, there was a back roll competition. We had Phantasmo doing back rolls, we had Mickey doing back rolls, we had the ref man doing back rolls. It was fun. And yeah, once the match had actually started, again, it was just an aerial assault from Phantasmo. And... Mickey keeping up with him every step. And I wouldn't say Mickey had as much of a aerial assault as what Phantasmo did, but he definitely wasn't afraid to go to the skies if need be. And it was just like it was a it was a good wrestling match, like it wasn't just the flying and the gymnastics and the jumping. It was good technical wrestling and I just I love I enjoy Mickey but Phantasmo just blew me away. His little walking around walking around the ring on the top row was great. Again, the numerous backflips were great. And it was just so much fun to watch. And of course it was Phantasmo who came out with the victory. And it was a really good match. If you'd got 3CW on demand, I'd recommend finding it when it goes online. Or if you don't, get it, or buy a DVD or Blu-ray, because, like I say, it was just a fun match, and it's worth any penny to pay for it, I see. And then, of course, there's the rest of the show still to come, so it's definitely worth it. Now, here's my match. My boy Nathan and Cruz and Lucas Steele, Team Sin, taking on Shreddy Breck in his second 3CW match. And my, my live debut, seeing him live debut, and I, I don't know if I, I, I don't know if I start with Martin Kirby, but if I didn't, I'll say Martin Kirby again. Shreddy Breck and Martin Kirby. So yeah, it was Team Sin versus Shreddy Kirby, uh, Shredby, Kerbreck. Well, yeah. And this was a match. Again, it was another good one. It was very power because. Of course, Shreddy Breck goes gym. Lucas Steele is a... He goes gym. 
He's a machine. He's a big lad. And Cruz definitely wasn't the biggest in the ring, but he's most certainly not a little guy. Whereas Matt and Kirby was the little guy in the match. But again, he's still big. He still knows how to wrestle. He's still good. Yeah, but he isn't one of the big guys. He's just good. And this, I really thought, was going to be t all the way for Freddie Breck. Like, I just thought Mr. Goes Jim was going to just have it. Like, obviously with somebody like Lucas Steele on, in the other si on the other side, I didn't expect it to be an easy win because, again, that is tank meeting tank. And, again, like, Nathan Cruz is my guy. Like, I love Nathan Cruz. But I hadn't pegged to lose this match because I really expected Shreddy to come out of it being an absolute machine. But, nope. To my surprise and happiness, this went to Team Sin. And, yeah, going back through the match, like I say, it was very much about these two, three, Goliaths and Kirby, clashing. And there was a good tag team rhythm between them both, like, both teams work together really well, so it's always fun when it comes to a tag team match. Is that great chemistry? And it was definitely there, so yeah, it was just like I said, it was another good match. I look forward to seeing more from all four men. Yeah. Next we see Benji. Super Sub Benji taking on John Badbone's Klinger. Well. 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 I was very scared for this match, as most would have been. I feel like even Benji was, but once that music starts and once he's in that ring, all that fear became power, and the little guy was just as big as Badbone's. And it was fantastic. It was. It was a match that got me very, let's say, hyped up because I'm always a fan of the underdog. And Benji being a close, well, a stock Dunning, as we are known. A hometown hero, yes. Benji being that guy. Benji being. Benji. Benji being Stockton lad. I, I want to. Make sure he is safe. And when you're in the room with bad bones, there's no such thing as safe because he will try to kill you. And did he? Yes. Did Benji let him? No. But just to jump back, the match before the match had started, we of course had Ace, Athle Ace Athletic, which was the combination this time of Ace Matthews and Miles Kanan, I think. I'm not sure what his last name is. I believe it might be something like that. But Miles and Ace Matthews. Who put Benji on call. Pretty much. This was his evaluation. Is he Ace, Athle is he Ace Athletic Material? That's a lot to say. Or is he just the Super Sub? <laughs> or is he just Earth Champion? Something that they're not. And then of course. Nobody can trust them anymore really so the true corner man for Benji none other than Prince Amin the man who Benji defeated last month I think it was Darkest Deeds Darkest Deeds was the last show I can't remember if it was last month but yeah, either way yeah he beat Benji retained his championship over him and of course he gained his respect so he came to help out Benji in this war against Badbone. And like I say, I can now kind of go back into it. What a war it was. In the beginning, Benji stood no chance. It was just like there wasn't it was it was your Goldberg Brock Lesnar moment. Think about that. Goldberg and Brock Lesnar, two big guys, really big, like compared to each other. And Goldberg pushed Brock way back and what happened he got speared speared blah 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 and yeah we all know what happened Lesnar lost within like a minute and a bit 
to Goldberg. But again, this is two giant men that were clashing. What happened here? Benji, the small guy, taking on Bad Bones, the big fierce guy, he got pushed. He stood right back up, he got in his face. He got pushed again. He stood up, he got right back in his face. So I think it's fair to say that Stockton's Benji, the super sub Benji, is better than Brock Lesnar. Yep, uh, yep. Yeah. Sorry, Benji, but now if you have to fight Lesnar, I will take the blame. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. He kept on getting up, he kept on getting up. He showed heart, he showed spirit. And most importantly, m what? Most importantly, he showed him a few good punches. It was very much about. The slow beat down. I say slow. It was lots of quick punches, but of course, Bad Bones was never going to go down by a punch. So it was very much about just wearing down his energy with Benji's punches. And every lick of offense that Benji got, I may be in the crowd getting all come on. And then whenever Bad Bones got the append, I was very much like, it was a very emotional match. Yep, but and of course Benji had the major crazy spot of coming off the top rope with the flippy power bomb power bomb situation. Oh, I'm getting emotional just remembering it now. Yeah, Benji took Bad Bones to his limits so much so that Bad Bones feared losing that it took him to grab the championship and clock Benji with it. And of course that meant Benji won. It might have been via disqualification, but the fact that it happened that way proves that Benji was on his way to winning and Bad Bones just didn't want to be defeated. Like, pinned or submitted. So he took the fall. And, poof, championship. So yeah, again, it was a fantastic match. Bad Bones definitely didn't fall as any less of a machine and scary man and Benji definitely elevated his stock with a fantastic match proved no fear proved all hard and again it might be via disqualification but he did come through with the win so good job Benji first of all before we talk about the match I believe this was when we had the intermission yay my intermission was fun I <laughs> Speaking of the scary bad bones, I met him. I also snapped a picture with Phantasma. And yeah, that was my intermission, so not really much to review, it was just cool. So straight into the second half, we saw the now vacant again 3CW Women's Championship up for grabs against Kanji and I remember Stevie Aaron said it and I realised I said it wrong in my predictions and now I forgot how Stevie Aaron pronounced it. So I will have to go back to how I said it, which was Emi Sakura. Okay, I, I, I know that I was definitely wrong. I remember hearing Stevie obviously announced it and that's when I realised I was wrong. But I can't remember how he pronounced it. So Kanji versus Emi Sakura. Sorry. For the, again, vacant 3CW Women's Championship. Both of these women were new for me to see. I, I believe... Kanji's wrestled for them before, but I don't think I was at that show. And it was it, Emi Sakura's debut for them, so it's completely new for me. And going into the match, again, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if it was going to be fantastic, which of course it was bound to be, but I didn't expect it to be. I don't want to say I didn't expect it to be. I was just on the fence, let's say, like I didn't really have any expectations going into it. I was ready to either be amazed or let down, like that was how it was. And what happened? I was amazed. At first, I didn't, I wasn't in it at first, like I'll be honest, but it's nothing to do with either one, it was just the fact of not knowing them. I was just a bit like, okay I'll just watch, and I was thinking, I was just like, yeah. And then, the more the match got into it, the more I was like, Whoa, something good has happened. So it was like I became invested and 
it was just it was a fun match it was it was a very loud match let's use that but yeah again this is one of the ones where I don't remember any of the spots I couldn't actually name a spot off the top of my head but I just know like, it was a fun match both women impressed and either it could it, again it could have went either way either woman could have come up with a win because they both put the hell of a hide but it was Sakura that in the end is now the 3CW Women's Champion and I feel like she will be a great champion because she did fantastic and somebody like Roxy when she's found but that's another thing would be a great contender for the championship but again we'll just have to see where that all leads to <laughs> speaking of Roxy being lost this match the three CW tag team championships were on the line against the sons of the damned Rory Coyle and Dragon Isu Taking on challenges, Rogues Gallery, Leon Mercer and Stan Kellett. I don't even know where to start with this. Well, well, first of all, the match was booked as just a regular, but it became no DQ. It, Rory made it no DQ match just because, why not? And that might be the biggest mistake Ro Rogues Gallery made because a straight match would have been so much easier to just lose. But this one, oh. I went from having fun in this match to just feeling sick. Because again, I was at the front row. And every time they came to the barricade, I'd be like, Hi, welcome to my barricade. Have a great time. And then when they'd leave, I'd be like, Come again soon. Oh, don't. Over there's better. And that was just what it was like. I was having fun with the barricade. And then a fan was attacked. Which was very brutal. Was it nice to see? And then we saw Drake and Satchel come out. HT Drake and Satchel. And they wanted answers for the whereabouts of Roxy. After she was taken in Stockton. A couple of months back. And of course we had Rory and his camera. And that was very much... The thing of this was trying using the camera to find her because it, Drake said he watched all the tapes and there's nothing on them. <whistles> Oi! Shh! Come here! You're not going to come over here then stay over there quiet. Shh! Right. So yeah, and. and I, I don't want to take anything away from the rogue value part of this match because. They did put up a fantastic fight. Well, in the beginning they did. When things were easy and simple, it was a very much either way match. But then things happened, lots of things happened. Again, a fan was attacked. There was fireballs, which was to what, which was what ended the match. There was tapes, videotapes, there was mannequin arms. There was jumper cable situations. I think it was a jumper cable situation. I just I don't know what I, I don't know how to review this match. It's not. It was. It made me feel sick, and I, obviously that's. If it didn't make you feel sick, then I don't know what you were watching. But that match is. In the best way, it made me feel uneasy. I enjoyed it by not enjoying it, and that was what made it fun. And I even remember telling Richard when they were cleaning it all up after the modes, and I was like, oh, hell yeah, Like that's not even the main event. Like I thought the brutality and the chaos, I was ready to just go home and take a cold shower and sleep. But... It wasn't to be because we still had the main event to come. And of course, like you say, even though it became a 4-on-2 situation, 
with Drake and Satchel getting involved. There was just too much sickness in the souls and the heads of Dragon Ice and Rory Coyle. Which brought them up with that referee stop. Ref ref stoppage victory. Because Mr. Jumpin' John Myers wasn't jumping no more. And even that poor man. That poor man's soul looked broken. Like, that was just not an easy thing. And, yeah, Rory and Dragon, Sons of the Damned, came out retaining their championships. And... Oh, I just don't know what to say. I look forward to the next show and seeing what happens with them there, but for now, let's just leave it. It was a fun, terrible, sick match. <laughs> and yeah, now we jump to the main event. One year in the making. Champion Rampage Brown taking on challenger Alex Gracie. Now... Just to, again, before the match even started, Alex Gracie, what a great, pro, like, his little promo before the start, like before the bell rang, was amazing. It's one of those things where, if anybody was at the show who either were new to the 3CW and didn't know, or just didn't care about the match, that promo made people care. Like, I already cared, and damn it nearly made me cry. Like, Rampage put Gracie through hell and in the worst kinds of way, but Gracie still gave that man the respect for being the best Britain has to offer. And yeah, but he, he's just not a great champion. If he chose to be a respectful champion, if he chose to put that championship in ranks that the championship deserved... He would be amazing for Britain, for 3CW. He could take him to whole new heights, but he decides to be the little slime ball that he is, and that's pretty much what Gracie said. And yeah, that promo damn near made me cry. So thanks for that, Alex. But for the match, yeah, it was it was very much about Rampage defending the championship on his own to prove the type of champion that he is. It was a good match. And it was a very much good one either way match until the interference. But this is another like Alex is no in no way a small person, but compared to Rampage, Rampage is Rampage is the tank. And Alex Gracie is just a little VW Beetle. So you'd expect this. But it didn't happen. That little beetle went at the tank. And that tank feared for itself. And what happens? Of course, that mage doesn't care what Gracie says. He's not going to be a straight up good guy champion. And we saw, at first it was Lucas Steele. Who came out and was all like, you ain't doing this. This is my ring. I am the standout. He didn't say those things, but... He came out yelling things. And... That was enough for ref distraction. Gracie distraction. For... And fan distraction. Because it was Richard who tapped me on the shoulder and was pointed at the ring. And I turned round. And there was Mr. Cruz just like... whoop Show stolen. But this match needed to end cleanly. Although, clearly after this, it wasn't clean. So who came up with your equalisers? None other than the guys that they faced earlier. What did I call them? Shredker? I can't remember now. Kerbrick? I think it was that. Either way, yeah. Shreddy, Breck and Kirby came out to rid of Steel and Cruz. And then everyone really thought it was going to be over because, well... Just to see, because of reasons, the show ran late, and any one of these matches could have been cut really short, but it still went on, and it was fantastic, but yeah, people thought this could have been the end, because show stolen, 
Rampage took his town and got the pin. But no. Gracie was like, this is how it ends. And he kicks out. And the match goes on. And Gracie was just very much out of it at this point. Like, he might have kicked out, but you could tell there was no coming back from him, really. He tried, but champion retained. R- Rampage retained. And it was a f- another fun match. And although it was one year in the making, I really hope it's not the end for Gracie's championship chase. So, yeah. Overall, the show was just great. Like... 10 out of 10 would watch again. 5 out of 5 would recommend seeking it out once it's online. They like say whether you watch it on demand or via DVD Blu ray. Like, t- go and find it. But again, when it's out, keep an eye on 3Cap Wrestling's Facebook and Twitter. Of course, that's where you will find out. So, yeah. 3CW Revival. 6 years homecoming. And was it a great homecoming? Yes. It was a it was a lot more fun than Spider Man's homecoming. So yeah, like I say, every match no match felt slow, no match felt cranky. They were all very well put together matches and a very well put together show. And yeah. Next we have Encore and then I think it's Fight before Christmas, fight something about fighting. I can't think of what the name of the show is now. The fight before Christmas. It's something like that, and then of course it ends back in Stockton this year with standing room only three, standing with muscles. That I put the poster here because that poster deserves to be seen because it's just fantastic. And yeah, again we'll see. We have. So that's three shows left this year. So I guess we'll just see what happens in those three shows and see where all these things lead to because who knows when Rugs will be back because Leon just, again, that tie ball just took him out, basically. And again, who can stop Benji at this point? Because if Bad Bones can't stop him, I'd be nice. It'd be nice to see somebody else try. And of course, see we have the new 3CW Women's Champion and Rampage retained. So championship-wise, it's going to be a very interesting final couple of months. I hope to be at some of the shows. Maybe maybe I might not be at all of them, but I'm going to try to be as many as I can for the rest of the year. So if I, if I am, I will see you there. If not, if you go, have a great time. And yeah, that was 3CW Revival's review. Check out my Patreon in the description. Check out Kirsty's Twitter and blog in the description. Again, all fantastic. If you want your stuff in the description along with Kirsty, feel free to support me on Patreon. Again, link is in the description. So, I guess I'll leave it there. I, that was Revival. I've been Ryan. Use our bunker at the start. You may have heard him unless I cut it out. During the sh- during the review, so yeah. Bye.